Hi, this is Don the Druid, and welcome to another season of Circle Round and the return of Practical Arcanum. Last season, we spent some time looking at the general aspects of preparing for ritual and worship. This season, I'd like to focus more on your altar and various magical and ritual tools. First up, the wand. The wand may be considered a primary tool in ritual work. In his Book of Shadows, Gerald Gardner stated that the wand is used to summon certain spirits with whom it would not be meet to use the athame. This can do with the nature of the metals that make up the ritual knife. The wand and the athame are oftentimes said to be at cross purposes as far as the elements they are linked to. At times the wand is said to be a tool of elemental fire, with the athame being a tool of elemental air. However, for the most part, most traditions see the wand as a tool of elemental air. In some circles, the magic wand may have began as a symbol of the phallus. It may have also originated as the shaman strumming stick used in religious, magical, and healing ceremonies. The wand also appears as a suit in the minor arcana of the tarot, and is often referred to as a baton, rod, or stave in such decks. In fact, the staff is in effect a very large wand. In some traditions, the staff is seen as one of the greater tools, with the wand being considered a minor tool. As such, when working with big groups, using a larger tool such as a staff or sword, when a smaller tool such as a wand would be harder to see. In classical Greco-Roman mythology, the god Hermes, or Mercury, has a special wand called a caduceus. The staff was also borne by Iris, the messenger of Hera. It is typically depicted as a short rod intertwined by two serpents in the form of a double helix and often topped with wings. Another form of wand from Greek mythology is a thyrsus, a staff covered with ivy, vines, and leaves and always topped with a pine cone. It was a symbol carried by gods such as Dionysus or Bacchus in Roman mythology, with the shaft of the rod representing the shaft of the penis and the pine cone representing the seed issuing forth. With its phallic associations, the wand is often referred to as a male tool. In certain feminine magical traditions, the uses of the wand are often downplayed. Depending on the tradition, the construction of the wand will vary. Some say the wand must be made of specific materials. The Key of Solomon says, to use hazel or nutwood. British traditional Wicca says a wand must have an amber bead at one end and a jet bead at the opposite end. The length of the wand is also dependent on one's tradition as well. The length between the crook of the elbow and the tip of the middle finger is said by many to be the best length for a wand. However, choose a length that is best for you. Wands can be carved or engraved with all sorts of symbols to fit the person using it. However, the Key of Solomon says certain symbols must be used. However, you can feel free to decorate your wand in any way best suited to you, its owner. Your creativity will empower it and make it your own. Well, I hope we've helped you learn a little bit more about the magical tool known as the wand. Join us next time on Practical Arcanum, where we'll discuss the history and various uses of other magical tools. Need a little satyr in your Greco-Roman pantheon? Why not choose the great god Pan? With the hindquarters, legs, and horns of a goat, Pan is the god of nature. Bees, wild animals, flocks, the shepherd, hunting, fishing, healing, rustic music, prophecy, panic, lust, and held the key to man into animal transformation. Yes, this horned lad can really do it all. Don't even get me started on the flute. While shaft up in Arcadia, he's recognized as the god of fields, groves, and wooded glens, and because of this, Pan is connected to fertility in the seasons of spring. The ancient Greeks also considered Pan to be the god of theatrical criticism. That's two thumbs up. Yes, if you need a god that can do it all, and at any time, choose the great god Pan today. Hi, welcome to Who's That God? I'm your host, Biff Parthenon. Today, our contestants are Demeter, Dionysus, and Kronos. Now let's get to that first question. What god has the appellation Eleutherius, which means liberator? Uh, Eros? Oh, I'm sorry, that's not the answer we're looking for. Um, it, it was me. Dionysus wins the point. Who was born of the union of Zeus and a mortal woman and then later ascended into Olympus? The Hercules. No, no, I'm sorry, that's not the answer we're looking for. Uh, that was awesome. Dionysus wins the point! <laughs> Who 
traveled to the underworld to bargain for the life of his deceased wife. That's Orpheus. Oh, I'm sorry. Not the right answer. All right, I did that. I did that. Dionysus wins the point. <laughs> Who was the son of God, traveled the world with a band of followers, was killed and rose from the dead and is celebrated in a symbolic consumption of his body and the drinking of wine. Dionysus? Dionysus wins the game! Hi, I'm Kevin, and you're watching Circle Round, but you already knew that. You may not have known that you can help your environment by volunteering for your community. You can just pick up trash off the street if you see it, or you can adopt a whole highway, like these people. That was great! Remember, volunteering big or small, it's all important, little step to a big journey. For more information, look it up on the interweb. That's where you are right now, isn't it? I mean, you're watching this on the internet. If you have enjoyed this episode and would like to know more about Greek or Roman pantheons, then please feel free to browse the book list where this video has been posted. You can also find many helpful sites online, and don't forget your local library. I like you very much. How much for the little girl? How much for the little girl? A whole fried chicken and dry white toast. <laughs> you better be worth it. I like fried chicken and toast.